7 a.m. Waking up in the morning. Gotta work on crypto. Gotta work on Unity stuff for YouTube. What's up? Trying to record. The dog has a giant fucking baton in his in his mouth and he's chasing me with it. <laughs> he's gonna beat me up. He's gonna beat me up. As I was saying, I am keeping the intro short so I don't scare newcomers. Um, speaking of which, if you're not subscribed yet, you should subscribe because you'll get a free and t-shirt delivered to your door directly by Elon Musk himself. So definitely worth pressing the button to subscribe. Um, yeah, sorry about the sleepy look. Living the puppy life, as you could tell. Today, we're looking at my savings, leaving the country. No, really, you know what the video is about. It's right in the title and you guys can read. So, we're gonna be taking this project we've made in the LL API and I'm gonna be hosting that on a different machine. This could be any project that you wanna put on the other machine and you wanna access through yours. So we're gonna be sending it over to another machine. We're gonna be opening port and we're gonna be connecting as a test. Okay, now um, I have the Linux architecture right here. If you're actually looking for a Linux tutorial, that's coming next, so make sure you subscribe. But today is about Windows. So click on the Windows in the build settings, make sure you build it for this platform, of course. And um, depending on which kind of machine you're gonna be putting it on, if it's a 64-bit machine, make sure you also change the architecture for supporting that. So build everything. So go ahead and build this somewhere. I'll be building it directly on my desktop. I'll call it window host and I'll just put that in there. Okay, so we've got our build. At this point, what we have to do is find ourselves a Windows 10 machine. In this case, I will be using mine, but you can have one on DigitalOcean, you can have one on Amazon server, you can have a different computer in your house. I'll be showing you how to open the ports and um, how to make sure we can connect to it. So right now, if we're to run this build, the only place we can really access it from, because we have not unlocked any port, is really just localhost. So if you see here, in, under my code, I will be connecting to, well, 127.0.0.1, which is localhost, and it's going to work, because it's running here in the background. Okay, now we want to make this a little bit better, you know, when we want to be able to connect this uh, and have other people connect to us and friends and family and all that, that kind of stuff. So what we're going to be doing at this point is you are going to go under ipconfig. So open up any command shell. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just make sure you press on the Windows key and then type in CMD. You'll see the command prompt. So under here, you'll want to do a IP. Now what you'll want to do next is to open up some port. This is going to be different for everybody. Everybody has a different routers and I can't show you the solution for you because, you know, unless you're using the same ISP as I am and the same modem as I am, well, not the same ISP, but the same uh, router as I am, um, then it's gonna be different for you, right? But um, it's all very, very similar. So you wanna be taking your default gateway, which is what we have down here, type that in inside of your browser, and then find a section in your um, in your router. So you'll, you'll be accessing your router from there. Find the section where it says port forwarding. Now in this case, mine's right here under firewall. So um, now it's good mentioning that you'll have to log in your router. So to do this, you'll need username and password. If you don't have those two and you've never touched your router before, a quick Google search with your router brand and default username and password. Usually it's something like admin, admin, and you'll be able to log in with that and then, and then change your password or do something like that. Um, don't leave it to admin, admin. Um, yeah. So once you have access, you find a section for port forwarding. And then what we have to do is in this case, you want to be opening port for WAN and LAN. Well, depending on what you want. LAN is if you have other people on the same network as you connecting, and WAN would be um, the world, basically. If, if you're opening up for everybody outside of your network. Right. So the port we're going to be using in this case, the one we've created in our application, is 26,000. Might be different for you, but if you guys remember, under our code, this is what we had, so 26,000. You might also want to be opening up um, the WebGL port. So 26,000 for the start, 20, 26,001 for the end. The protocol with Unity is always UDP. So go under the protocol, change that for UDP, 
and then you should be able to click on apply. Um, they might also ask you from which computer you're opening this from. So you have multiple computer under your network maybe. Now I don't want to open up the drop down here just so I don't reveal my network architecture here. But um, you're going to be able to write it manually as well. This is the IPv4 address you're fine under ipconfig. Now again, I don't want to show it, but it's right here in the same um, command window as we had for default gateway. Once you're done, click on apply and then your port will be open on the router level. But Windows 10 has this little thing here that's really annoying to me. Um, is that they have additional protection on top of the router. They have the Windows firewall. So we'll have to open that up and also open those as well. So let me go here under my Windows key, type in a fire for firewall. We're going to open up the Windows Defender firewall and we'll be doing um, some things in the advanced setting. So open up advanced setting and we'll be creating a inbound and also outbound rule for this very specific application. As you can see, I got a couple of rules in there, but we'll be creating a new one. So on your right hand side of the window, click on a new rule, and this is going to be a program. Now we'll be selecting my build, which is under my desktop windows host and then tutorial server. That's the one I want to be allowing um, data to flow in and out of. Click on next. You are going to allow all the connections. You want to apply this rule for your private network and also the public network, which is the whole internet basically. And then you can put say um, the name of your file here, tutorial server.exe, finish. And what we'll do is we'll go back in it. Now go back on your rule, double click on it, go under protocol and ports. Under the protocol type, you're gonna be allowing UDP. And remember, we're going to do that for a very specific port, which is 26,000 to um, 26,001, can't type today, and we'll hit apply. Now we'll do the same exact thing as we just did, but this time for the outbound rule. So I'll be doing that for a program as well. Let me find this, okay, that's my program, allow connection, name tutorial underscore server.exe, and we'll go back, click on it, change the protocol and port. We wanna do UDP for 26,000 to 26,001, hit apply. Okay, when the ports are open, you're now ready to run this server on your dedicated machine, which in my case is not dedicated at all, but um, if you have a machine on Amazon server, if you have a machine on DigitalOcean, this is the same machine as you unlock the, the firewall for and also unlock the router for, make sure you run your build. We're not 100% done, but we're gonna be doing some tests. So my build is running, on my side over here, I've got my laptop. Hey, this is Brackies. Okay, so right now on my other client, I will be connecting using my client application and um, I basically have the same code in, in both computers right now. So the code I see over here is the same as I see on this screen right there. And I'll be changing the um, server IP to the IP of this machine right here. Now, listen to me because this is quite important. If you have a IPv5 address, uh, the one that are quite weird, they don't really look like an IP address and they have like a bunch of characters in it, um, you're gonna have to go get a static IP address for that. So a static IPv4 address, because it's not going to work with UNET at the moment. It's going to work in the new version of UNET, but this version of UNET, I haven't figured out how to make it work. So I just get myself a static IP address instead. Um, and then you can find what your IP address is, your static IP address by going over to whatismyip.com. So on this website, whatismyip.com, it will say your IPv4 is, take that number, input that right in here, and then start the application on your different machine, on your other machine. And would you look at that? We are connected. Well, actually you can't even see it. Well, we're connected and that's my application. So. I'm connected using uh, my client application that we've made in the LL API tutorial. Now, um, let's make this a little bit more fun. Let's make this a little bit more, um, in case something happens to the machine, it's gonna reboot by itself and actually be able to sustain, sustain on its own, basically. So what I'd like us to do right here is to go and do some configuration to the startup programs of Windows. What I meant by that is let's just make sure the build starts by itself um, once Windows start up, that's something you might want to have on your machine out there so you don't have to connect all the time and then um, start to build yourself. So I'm going to go under run by hitting Windows key and R or you can just go here, type in run, you'll find it here, not RuneScape. Why is that installed on my computer? Um, and then you do shell start up, I believe. Yep. 
So just like this, I'll do it again. I'll show it again. Shell to the startup. This is your startup folder. Everything that goes in here is being triggered automatically once Windows startup. So if I want to have this build run every time that it starts up, the machine starts up, what I can do is take this build, hold right click and drag it over here. And let's do a create shortcut here. So what this is going to do, every time I boot my machine, it's going to go through the whole folder and execute everything, uh, which will end up being like this. Now, you realize that we're going to have like this pop up every time. So that's technically not working, right? We need to actually change this around a little bit because, well, that's cool, right? If we start this program, the window pops up and we're just blocked there. We first have to remove this window. And what would be even better than that? is we remove the graphic altogether because, well, we're not rendering anything anyway. So, um, okay, yeah, let me allow that. You have to make this, you have to accept this, by the way. Um, yeah, we don't have to render this screen at all because we're not rendering anything useful on it. We're not, we don't really, we don't really care. It's just a server here for parsing information, right? So what you can do is you can actually start this in a different mode. You can start this in a no graphic mode. So I'll be removing it from startup. But what we're going to do here, we're going to go back under our build. And I just realized this is my build here, Windows host, not the other one. Um, we're going to go right here, create a new text file. It's going to be a bat file, basically. So let's just call it something like launch server or launch headless server is more accurate for this. Let's open up this text file. Now here is the command you want to have when you start up this server. Right now, I'll take the same exact name. So tutorial underscore server.exe, that's correct. The um, dot in front of it right here is to make sure we're inside of this folder. Take this exe and let's boot it with two command line arguments. First one is batch mode and the second one is no graphic. What this will do, this will start the Unity application without you noticing. So let's actually make sure we take this file, save as, really important you do a save as, and then change the format to all file. We have to change the extension to dot bat for a batch file. And then you'll see it as a Windows batch file. Instead, I'll remove the text and I'm going to click on this and it's running in the background. We just don't see it right now. Now I was about to put this right here in the startup, but I just realized that uh, the path is going to be wrong. So let's make sure we, um, we go back and edit this. You can just right click on the bat file, edit, and it will open up in notepad just like this. Now what I'll do is I'll grab the actual, the full link to this tutorial server. So I'll do backslash here, tutorial server.exe and grab this whole pad, put it here instead because we'll be calling it from somewhere else. So now I've saved this, the bat file has been saved. And as you can see, this is what it runs, right? It runs exactly our tutorial.exe and it runs it in batch mode. Now, uh, if we open this up, you'll see that the Windows shell actually takes quite a lot of memory. That's because we're running Unity beneath it, basically. Let's go ahead, close it now, drag and drop it inside of the startup folder and see if it still works. It still works. And from this point on, your server should work. Let me just double check that. And here we go. So everything is working. And on top of that, everything is working every time you reset your machine or if the electricity goes away, goes down, um, this will launch automatically up on startup. And that's it. That's how I'm hosting this file on Windows 10. Now, is it the best way to do it? I don't think so. I think uh, we're much better on Linux, but this is going to be the topic for the next video. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you join Discord, make sure you take good care of your puppies and dress yourself properly if you go outside. It's quite cold.